Hey guys, I'm Mark. And I'm still Matt. Um, we are building something different today. Hey! Uh, we're still doing, uh, we're working in the series that we're doing for Red Door. Uh, this is going to be uh, components for a stone Stella. Uh, a Stella is sort of a, uh, a marker block, a carved marker stone that you would find in the jungle. Um, uh, Let's just go with, let me Google that for you. And Looks like this. Well, that was, it that was like, interesting. It looked like that, because we Googled uh, it for you. <laughs> Good yeah. people like that. So this, uh, this piece is going to have uh, relief carvings of different animals on it. And so we're going to make uh, repeatable components. Matt is, uh, well, I'm going to let Matt tell you what he's doing. So uh, part of this is we're going to have a lot of the same animal over and over again. So rather than making those a unique carve every time, we're going to be casting these. Apparently the nasty pointy teeth. <laughs> One of them, I promise, will have nasty pointy teeth. Uh, so we're going to do, I think it's a jaguar, a monkey, an eagle, and a snake. Is, sure, it's a pretty good representation of the animal <laughs> kingdom. There's no platypus, because that would look weird in a carving. It, it does. We tried it. Anyway, uh, so we're about to show you uh, me going through and uh, plagiarizing some uh, thousand-some-odd-year-old art to uh, get some of our vectors. And uh, we're going to take those over to the CNC machine to uh, carve them out. So um, take it away, my computer. So what I'm doing now is I'm taking this JPEG that I plagiarized off of the intertubes and uh, importing that into Adobe Illustrator and using the pen tool to give it a rough trace around the, uh, the outside, which on this piece is a little tricky because this photograph is a very worn stone carving and it's sometimes difficult to tell uh, what's a shadow and what's actual relief. After getting the rough outline, um, I'm going to come in with the, uh, I'm not sure what the name of this tool is, the, the Vertex Alteration Machine. Maybe there'll be some YouTube comments telling me what I'm actually doing because the internet knows better than I do. Anyway, uh, to round it out, uh, give it a more organic and, uh, and weathered look. And once we have the art here, I'm going to take this and uh, take it over to our, our other machine uh, towards uh, vCarve Pro is the software used to take our vectors and actually write them into G-code that the CNC machine reads to then start cutting. This is our vector after being imported and played with some in vCarve Pro. Uh, I've got it broken up into some areas here that are going to be pocket pads. This outside border is going to be the, uh, the piece that's going to be cut out. And then we have some more little bit of detail in here. Uh, I'm going to break this into three different cut paths. Number one is going to be a, uh, a path with a V-bit. That'll be a 60 degree V that's going to come in and give it a, a bit of a carved look as far as the geometry goes. And then after that, I'm going to come in with a pocket path and mill down these areas here so that they are a little lower, uh, although they're still part of the, uh, the, the single piece. And then lastly, using that same uh, end mill bit, I'm going to cut out the whole thing so we can be applied to the rest of the piece for uh, casting and uh, molding, not necessarily in that order. So this is the guy that we're going to start with. This is our 60 degree uh, V bit. And uh, I'm going to put that in and show you what it does. So the CNC machine is done with uh, our, uh, our V-bit pass. I've changed out to our uh, eighth inch end mill and we're going to go and mill out all these little areas in here and then come in with the final cutout pass. This is James the Jaguar in his master bit state. Uh, he has got our little bricks around here that I put some uh, aging on just hitting it on the edge of the uh, disc sander. A little stone texture there. And uh, he's ready to go to a box mold. 
I guess we're gonna do that now. Even though in the last video, or in, in a previous video, ooh, magic, um, I said, well, you've seen a box mold made before. We're gonna go ahead and show you how we make a box mold with this guy. Because we're special. Yay. I lied already. Uh, we said we were gonna make a box mold out of this guy. We decided that uh, uh, better off, we are gonna make a box mold, but it's gonna, be a, it's gonna end up being a two-part mold. So we will cast the front of this guy and then cast uh, a separate a separate backer piece for this so we can so this will be one solid piece of resin the reason we're going to do that is that um, is that what we want to do is pour uh, liquid urethane in this guy first and do a slush cast and then pour in some expanding foam and backfill it uh, to make it strong and stuff so matt is going to uh, work on the box sides um, and make a, a box on the table saw and at the same time i will be uh, using this uh, dissolved wax sealer uh, on our MDF so that it's not quite so porous and so that it releases easy from the silicone. Uh, so we're going to show you both those things at the same time. I'm going to nail stuff to stuff now. Uh, I'm off alignment. I'm off alignment. Alright, uh, this is going to start out as the top of our box mold and end up as the bottom later on. We have a one and a quarter inch pour hole. And, uh, yeah. One and a quarter inch Forstner bit leaves a nice uh, clean walled flat bottom hole. Um, these that I didn't use because I was lazy and decided to turn on my mouth instead. So, um, carry the nothing, that's going to fudge out to about 675 cubic centimeters. All right, this is Moldstar 15 Slow, uh, platinum uh, cure silicone we're using. The platinum is the catalyst, it's part of what makes it expensive. You've got uh, tin cure silicone and platinum cure. And this stuff is actually uses platinum as a catalyst. Uh, and it's a, it's a really nice uh, uh, detail capture silicone. Uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to pour into this mold with the face open up to a point just to make sure I've got all this detail captured. And then once I do, we'll put this plate in place, clamp him in, and I'll finish the pour through that hole. Uh, we're going to use uh, 350 mils per of part A and part B. It's a one-to-one -one mix, so that makes it easy. And uh, we're gonna do that now. All right, so I'm giving these guys a, a good thorough stir. Uh, and we should be ready to pour in just a moment here. I'm trying not to introduce too much air into this. Although, I will. We'll try to stay away from the edges so we don't make a moosh. You mean up here? Yeah. Yeah. Don't make it weird. Just watch it for four hours. You have to watch for all four hours, or it's like a it's like a pot that you've cleaned. That is it is it done yet? Is it a watched pot or a washed pot? Let's do one of those uh, those spiral wipey things, like the passage of time happens, where you just like that. We'll do that. Uh, so, can we take the sides off? We don't really yeah. want to. Yeah, we can take the sides off. Um, 
Yeah, I can just take this whole thing apart. Yeah, that's They're great. But uh, I made it with no glue, with just nothing else. Let me just rebuild it. Well, hell, if that's the case, it is nailed down to this board. Uh, yes, the original is nailed down to that. Haha! <laughs> yeah, and there's our missing volume in the form of little bubbles there. I think that'll be fine. Ta da! One Jaguar! Wahaha! Something is mold inhib or uh, cure inhibiting, and I think it is. Uh, the MDF? It's, it's something in the MDF. There's got to be some sulfur in there or something. I did seal the. the the hell out of it, and this is going to that, be good that's enough. That's not the phrase you're going to use. You were no, say it's not. I, was, I just self-edited um, or self-censored, um, and that can be washed out, and we're okay. I believe this quarter inch is not the Plum Creek. This is the cheap stuff, and that may be what's doing it because you don't see it anywhere else. Granted, there's not as much open, open uh, pocket milled stuff. He is referring to uh, to the the brand of uh, and quality frankly, of MDF we're using. Uh, there are several available. And uh, Adam Savage introduced us to Medex through Tested.com. Uh, TruePan. TruePan, sorry. And then we found Medex as a result of that. So, fantastic. Um, Just Google it if you care. Hey, quick note here. Uh, we had this guy mounted on a, a backer board uh, to give us this, this flange. Um, so uh, now that we've got this guy pulled out, what we're going to do is separate this from the backer piece and then pour our the other half of our mold so this isn't a pure box mold it's going to be a, a really rough two-part mold this guy doesn't have to be pretty or well this is going to be pretty but uh we don't need a super mold for this we'll probably only get to pull 15 or 20 copies and they're trimmable and it's going to get a finish on top of it and stuff like that that uh so we're not trying to pull the most beautiful perfect copy so this is just down and dirty I'm going to cut some registration keys into this uh, to help the two mold halves register together so that they're hitting it in the same place every time. Uh, so I'm just going to cut some wedges out. Like so. And I'm going to cut these in both directions so that I have an inside key and an outside key. I have, uh, or Matt, actually built a new box around this guy. Uh, I have re-waxed the MDF surface, and I've done two coats of spray release on the silicone right now, and this is the third. Um, and just for the kids at home, uh, is there a kind of mold release that you really don't want to use? You don't want to use universal mold release because it is badly named. Uh, that is glue for silicone. <laughs> we have made that mistake. Universal is not universal. Um, and uh, make sure to breathe deep. Yes. When spraying. Yes. Use a it's good respirator. It waxes the lungs. Um, <laughs> the uh, we're gonna pour our second half right here. You can see my little registration marks that I've cut in there, and um, and so we're gonna mix up some more silicone. And yay, you've seen that already. But we're gonna do it again. All right, so I've done something to demonstrate uh, a little bit better. Uh, what I did was I mixed a little bit of red pigment with our, uh, our part A, and, uh, and I'm going to mix these two together. That'll that basically mean that our, the first half of our mold and the second half of our mold will be a different color, just so you can see it after the fact a little bit better so it doesn't just make a, a sea lion. Really. A sea lion? Yes, a sea lion. <laughs> um, and uh, so I've measured out uh, uh, 18 ounces, basically 550 mils of part A and part B. Part A is pigmented and pre-stirred. And uh, I'm gonna mix these two together and we'll pour the second half of this mold. So I've poured our, uh, our second half of the mold and it came out purple, which I didn't really expect, but who cares? Um, 
And uh, what I did was I took, uh, I took what's left of our silicone, had a little bit left over, and poured them in these containers to make uh, little mixing pads. Uh, so it's a nonstick pad. You can use it to mix um, epoxy and, uh, or let's say, uh, body filler like Bondo. Um, also, super glue mixed with baby powder. You mix those two things together to make a, a little fine filler. Um, so that's why we do that. So waste not, want not, uh, mix those guys. This thing is going to take about four hours for full cure. So we're, here's, the, here's the next little time wipe thing. All right, so I can tell from, uh, from my, uh, the bottom of my bucket silicone right here. Uh, by the way, whenever we mix epoxy, Bondo, anything, instead of touching the piece that you're actually you're working on, just save the stuff. Don't throw it away. And that way you can not touch, touch it, it to find out that it's hard. Um, so what I'll do is just break this all the way around. To start breaking the seal. And then I'm going to disassemble this, leaving the box in place, hopefully. There we go. Well, that worked. Here. Uh, I've been pulling our original out, and we're gonna we're gonna use this box uh, just to uh, to keep everything square and straight. But for right now, I can at least show you. how that guy goes together. And you can kind of see the reason why I did this in two different colors so that you can see just the, what's left of the keys there. So we will uh, we'll actually cut a hole in this guy uh, to, to uh, pour resin in. We're going to end up using 65D. It's another smooth on thing. Uh, but we'll, uh, we'll pour into here and just slush cast. Uh, we may actually do some of them solid resin, uh, but slush cast it so we have a nice hard candy shell and then put our high density foam inside of that and then just let it blow out through the back with the whole thing clamped shut so that we don't have a hydraulic separation of the mold uh, from the, the pressure of the foam itself. I've had an incredibly stupid idea. I, I want to see if we can cut the back plate of this, uh, the, the, the part two that we did of the silicone mold with a Forstner bit. I've never milled through, uh, through silicone before. It's probably a horrible idea, but it'd be convenient. So we'll find out. That actually worked. <laughs> <laughs> I've just pulled the first eagle off of the CNC machine, which is our next animal. He looks something like, like this. And uh, given the line density on this guy, I'm going to come in with a smaller bit and redo him. So these uh, lines will be quite as wide or quite as deep. And that'll make him look a little more eagly. The, a lot of the detail on the, there we go, detail on the, the talons was kind of lost. So we're going to try this again. Okay, so I'm, what I'm using is uh, 65D uh, to do a little slush cast on the inside of this thing. Hard candy shell, think of it that way. And then we'll pour foam on the inside of that as just to, to beef out the volume. Um, I have pre-measured parts A and part B uh, just to save time on camera. I'm going to add uh, just a couple of drops of pigment to my part B. Give that a little pre-stir. And then I will pour my A into my part B. Now I have not uh, measured, well, I have measured them to make sure that they are the same. I have not tried to do any sort of volumetric calculation on, uh, on how much resin I'm using because all I'm trying to do is coat the inside of it. I know I've got more than enough for that. Uh, so I'm just mixing up what it what looks to me to be 
I don't know, six and a half ounces, if I had to guess. And I can feel this starting to heat up in my hand. It is exothermic and I've got a two and a half minute pot life, so I will not spend too much time stirring this so that it doesn't get too interesting. This is just an experiment, so I can tell very quickly. Can you give me a paper towel? Um, I can tell very quickly that I have used more than enough. There's definitely more than I need right here. Thank you. And for the next few minutes, which we will compress, uh, I'm going to slosh this around and coat the inside of my mold. That thin candy shell is a thin candy shell. I can still see the mold color under it. So it's thin enough that I can see through it. All right, um, we figured out our remaining volume inside the mold after we poured our, our slush cast. Uh, I've mixed up, uh, or I've, I've measured out parts A and B of the, the 10 pound foam again. Um, I'll mix these together. We'll pour it in here and that should fill up the inside of the, uh, the void um, inside our hard candy shell. Uh, I've mixed, uh, I've mixed uh, a couple of drops of pigment into this guy, uh, so it'll turn out our, our JD green, our dark JD green color again for the foam. But since I've pigmented both, it's just trying to make the whole sandwich dark. I poured from one container back into the other container. The reason I did that was I could just see that, well, I kind of want to make sure I had both parts, all of both parts mixed. It wasn't even taking the full volume of mixed without expansion. It may need a release hole somewhere else. So we've got this guy uh, in our uh, uh, poured. We added a little bit to it because we didn't feel like it was enough. Now it's probably too much. That's okay. Um, but uh, this stuff takes about an hour to cure. Uh, so we have to wait again for the demold on this. And now we give birth to a jaguar. Well, hopefully. Um, we, added, uh, we added some foam to this, um, and we're going to demold it and just see what we got. We haven't waited the full cure time on this. Because we're a little we're impatient. impatient. And, and then it's we'll, late. We'll probably end up using this guy for destructive testing anyway. Probably twist that. Figure out some kind of way to saw that without hurting the. Uh... Yeah. Just seem a little. Push oh. in. And. Anticipation's killing me. So there's the the hard candy shell on the outside. Ooh, candy. With with your foam fill in there. Um, let's use this as a pad. With a foamy nougaty center. And, uh, and we can probably chisel some of that off. Uh, probably not the best thing we can do to our mold, but... Seems to be working. Yeah, I just don't want to split the mold. Yeah. 
Aha. I'm happy with that. Yeah. It's a little light. I think it needs to feel more stony. Not bad. <laughs> Not bad for a couple of hacks. I was going to say amateurs, but <laughs> we're getting paid. So, ha! Ah. All right, more to come. Stay there. So, Matt, what does failure look like? Um, it looks something like this <laughs> if we stop. Uh, so we are going to take the next couple minutes to completely destroy the self-esteem of poor James the Jaguar because he failed us so very, very badly. Take it away. Uh, okay, problem number one is uh, we actually poured in through the back of the, of the, uh, the mold. Uh, we did our hard candy shell, and then, which actually we got a, a decent candy shell out of it. And then we poured 10 pound foam into the, the cavity that was remaining. Um, the foam, because we had no relief holes on the back of it to vent air, it caught some air and didn't travel. So this side of the mold is nice and firm. This side of the mold feels like Preston's mom. Wow. Yeah. That is a little offsides. <laughs> That's the guy behind the camera. You gotta give the guy a complex. <laughs> uh, problem two, as I flip this around, uh, it feels nothing like stone. It is, it is too light. Um, it feels like a, a piece of plastic, which, which it is. Um, so that's, it needs to be more massive so people might pretend that it's stone when they pretend. handle it. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, the, uh, this is an assemblage of parts. The original is an assemblage of parts. Um, and so this is a quarter inch MDF carving placed onto a half inch MDF plate. Uh, and these little accent boards are on here. There's a tiny little undercut where the two pieces met. And we didn't seal that. Figured we we're gonna cast this thing anyway. It didn't, that tiny bit of undercut probably didn't matter. But what it did was, because we're only casting a shell, uh, it meant that it cracks right where the two pieces come together because that tiny bit of undercut reversed on the inside of the mold, however you want to think about it, made the, uh, made the, the plastic too thin. So that's a problem. Uh, step number four in why James failed us, so I'll get you a view on that, is, uh, he, is he is the wrong thickness. Uh, he is. He is too thin. Reason for this is we have our nice, big, fat, inch thick uh, silicone here, which uh, still has its own mass, and uh, it's, it's kind of droopy when, when sitting in here. Um, and another part of that, uh, getting into some things we gotta fix on the mold, is when we, when we clamped it, it's also too small, in addition to being too thin. Uh, show this over here. Uh, so when we clamped it down, if you'll notice, he's kind of rattling around in there, or he would be if it weren't, you know, goopy um, or soft. That's the better word. Uh, he doesn't quite make it to the edge because when we compressed the mold, it pushed down, so it, it shrunk on the on the z-axis, but that that volume kind of filled out on the x and y, which ended up making our uh, our final piece a little too small, in addition to being kind of too thin and warped. Uh, okay, so um, the, uh, oh. to, to fix that, what we're going to do is we're going to reset this, put our backer panel in place, and put a couple of vertical keys uh, to hold the, the center of this backer piece uh, up so that it doesn't sag in the middle. Um, we'll do that, and also we built this box as a crush limiter so that you're not just, you're not just taking clamps and pranging down on the thing and making the, the walls Squeeze out. Prang is still not a word. It is. It is a word. Prong is a word. It's no, no. Prang is a word. I don't think. Anyway, prang, prang is the um, the uh, in order to keep the walls from squishing out and getting fat and thus making the the piece too thin or too too small dimensionally, uh, we have a crush limiter. Uh, so we built up this wall and it can only travel about a thirty second of an inch. So that should take care of that. So solutions are. We got another problem. Ah. Uh, um, you probably, hopefully, couldn't tell from the time lapse you just witnessed, but uh, that took a really, really long time, and we have to make a lot of these. So, the amount of money we might have saved by doing a two-part with the candy shell and then the foam fill, because the foam is less expensive per volume than the just the pure resin, um, we way burnt through that money in just sheer time. It just takes too damn long. Um, so, uh, we fix the roof of this guy, give it a vertical key. Uh, we have our crush limiter, so we don't crush the walls down and screw things up. So and and then fix, fix one is 
corrections to the, the mold itself. And fix two is we're just going to do the whole thing in, in resin. Uh, what would it be? 300? 300, 300 Q? Uh, we'll one of them. One of them. We'll be a 300 with maybe a letter on the end. We'll, we'll see what we have in the leftover bin I think and it's, I make think it it's actually. I think we're going to use 320. Uh, it's got a shorter pot life, but it's not so crazy fast as 300Q, and it's a little bit less expensive. Uh, but we will make that determination based on what we have, and then we'll let you know momentarily. A quick word on sunk cost fallacy. So, uh, this is uh, Eagle version 1, and as I said, I redid the vectors a little bit for Eagle version 2 here, which... Uh, as you can see, it's got a, uh, a narrower bit that's not going quite as deeply, so the, the detail is not quite as overwhelming and uh, just random chatter. Uh, but still, it's not really in the same style as the Jaguar, uh, as, as James here. So, because so I like this one, I, I like the art on this guy, so we're trying to base everything off of him. I'm, uh, I'm just going to ditch the eagle here. Uh, he's still a little too... North American slash maybe Aztec in style and not enough Maya. So I found a new vector and I've been playing with that. So sunk cost. Uh, it's not really that good, so I'm going to stop putting time into it. That's... Sorry, Eagle. We have here our completed menagerie of critters. We have named them all and promptly forgotten their names. There's a Philip in there somewhere. It could be the monkey. So next step is, uh, as with the Jaguar, we are going to make box molds for uh, his, I guess, weird adopted siblings. Well, that one's adopted. That one's adopted. Anyway, uh, yes, we're going to go do that. A few tweaks from version one, where we found some things that could have worked better than just as we did on the Jaguar. We're making our mold walls thicker, so we're not idiots. Well, we'll still be idiots, but we're making our mold walls thicker. <laughs> that, that's not really going to help that in any <clears throat> meaningful sense. This time around, we're going to go about making our box molds in a slightly more well thought out and organized manner than the slap assery of the Jaguar mold. Step one is the base. This is kind of drawn to overscale. Uh, and then onto the base. And this will be, by the way, one half inch MDF. We will temporarily nail onto that. This is our, our masterpiece. Well, that's an overstatement. <laughs> yes, this is our masterpiece. Beautiful. Um, and we will have the edge of the box mold will be tacked down onto here. This is more one half inch MDF. Uh, our space in here is going to be one inch. We did a half inch on the last time, and that was a little thin. Uh, it let the, the squish factor kind of uh, factor into, let the factor factor? Too much squish factor. Uh, we have our pour line will be one half inch above the top of the masterpiece. Yeah, there I said it again. And we'll just have a line drawn on the edge of that. That'll give us our, our poor indication. We're not going to try to put a top on it this time. That proved to be kind of useless on the Jaguar, so we're just going to skip that step and let, let gravity give us a nice, even uh, surface on that. And for keys, around the edge here, I'm going to come in with a Forstner bit, a uh, quarter inch, three-eighths thereabouts, and drill some holes around the edge there that when we lay the flip this whole thing upside down, and lay the top in, those holes will then become the keys for the, uh, the top part, which was the purple on the Jaguar mold. So here we have finished uh, at least the first round of our pours on our uh, Mayan menagerie. We got here, uh, eagle. Yeah. Uh, this is the this is the new and improved eagle. Uh, he is much more 
artistically consistent with his brethren. And I just like that vector better. So uh, yeah, we went with that instead of as is monkey and the snake fail bird. Uh, also, another little quick change we did. Uh, we were doing these guys in uh, in just a colored resin. We added pigment to a resin that that goes white. Um, that was the 320 or 325. That's th the 320. This yes. is 325. And 325. What we did was we went to a clear resin, added a little bit of pigment and a, uh, a filler. And that filler gives it a bit of a stone texture, so that if our if our uh, or a stone fill, so that if our paint chips, we actually go back down to a stone that's darn identical to to the finish that we're doing on top of this. And this stuff is actually clear, so this isn't just paint. If you were to do a cross section, which I it's we, we somewhere, don't have that. Uh, <laughs> I think we threw it away because it was boring. Uh, if you were to cut this or chip it in any way, it would look uh, still just like this, just like that for this camera now. So that's our solution so far. Uh, we have a lot more of these guys to make and uh, I will probably add the paint job on one of these guys to our mind mask paint job video that we'll be doing soon. So please like and subscribe to uh, be informed of when these keep coming and if you have any questions about what we're doing or why we're doing it or what the hell is wrong with us uh, put those in the comments section somewhere down there. I think the subscribe button is down there, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, we realize that we're not telling you absolutely everything. And if you have a question about anything that we're doing, or if there's something, you know, happy to help. Uh, and Click the button. Please, just, yeah, ask.